probably won't need to put all of all of those in. Let's move this up just okay. So she's ripping the cabbage leaves and just a, them just to make help, sure that they help make it fit. So there we go. I think we only need to use one. Hmm. Okay. Look at that. So let me give this a little closer look to the camera. You can see that the cabbage leaf is here around the edge and then there's liquid on top of it. Mm -hmm. And, and now we're just gonna, gonna add our jar. Just gonna put that jar in there. And that's just gonna be for weight. Yep, and then actually, you know, it's sticking up just a little bit, but when we put the cover on, it's gonna push down. And when you put the cover on, you do not want to put it on real tight because um, it needs to be able to, you know, those fermentation gases need to be able to escape. So, yep. And then uh, you can just leave it sit out on your counter for five to 10 days. So we'll see you again in five to 10 days. Not really. Nancy brought some that she just finished making. So we can show you the finished product Yeah. right now. Here it is. Lovely sauerkraut. You can see the carrots in there and the apple that adds some sweetness. It's really good, really yummy. Now we have about a month to wait for our sauerkraut to ferment. Well, that's, I, I let it sit for a month when I'm using my crock, but it can be ready in as little as five to 10 days. Okay. We have five to 10 days and Nancy is going to share with us some extraordinary testimonies that have actually been occurring in her life, which, uh, of course I've never made sauerkraut. So that was amazing. But then I also, um, wanted her to share with you. She's just, Nancy is a regular every day. She's not a pastor. She's not ever been to Bible school. She's not ordained. She is just an everyday you and me. Well, more you than me, because I am all those things. But, <laughs> but, you know, it just goes to show, God's not a respecter of person. Anybody can do this. So about um, four years ago, the Lord led me into praying for people for healing. And um, there was a time when, you know, I'd seen in uh, Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. I'm going to read that. It says, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. It doesn't say anything about that we have to pray, it just says we have to lay hands on the sick, and they'll recover. And so the first time that I ever experienced that, I was out in Iowa in the grocery store, and there was a guy that had his arm in a sling, and so I asked him, hey, you know, what's going on? What'd you do? And it was a problem with his shoulder. And so I did ask him if I could pray for him, and he gave me permission. But instead of praying, I just simply put my hand on his arm. And then I just started talking to him. I don't even remember what it was we were talking <laughs> about. You know, I don't know, the weather or what we were shopping for. And after probably about 30 seconds, I says, Okay, check it out. How's the pain? Wow! Well, not, not quite. He says, oh, okay. he says, it's a little better. And so I put my hand on his arm again. And then, you know, we're just talking. And the second time I asked him, how is it? He moved it and he got the biggest, I mean, he just had this amazing <laughs> look on his face and he says, how'd you do that? You know? Mm -hmm. And so, I, sh I just shared that, that scripture with him, how, you know, that as believers, we can do this, you know? And, um, and then there was another time I was at a healing meeting in South Holland, Illinois, and the guy that was leading the meeting, um, there was a young man that was having problems, knee problems. And so this guy prayed for him, and the young guy said that his pain level went down to about a two. And then after the meeting, you know, people were just standing around talking and I saw that young man sitting and he was rubbing his knee. Mm. 
So I went over and sat down next to him and asked him, you know, hey, what's going on with your knee? And he said, oh, there's still some tightness there. So I just reached my hand over and I just put my hand on his knee. I didn't pry, you know. And then um, a little later on, you know, I actually have a video testimony of him on my phone. And, you know, I asked him about, you know, okay, what happened? And he said that when the other guy prayed, his pain level went down to a two. And he says, but when you prayed, it went away. And I said, well, actually, I didn't pray at all. <laughs> because it says I can just lay hands on yep. the sick and I recover. simply believed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And But he said that it was when I laid my hand on his knee that that tightness just left. Wow. You know? And then I've got one more. There was a, a homeless guy that had broken his ribs. This is someone that one of my daughters knew. And so again, you know, I just laid my hands kind of on the back of his ribs and we're just talking. And after a couple minutes, I asked him to check it out. And so he was moving around and he didn't have any more pain. Wow. And <laughs> he, he had been having a lot of difficulty. He couldn't lay on his right side without pain. And anyway, I um, was given a report a couple of days later that he was comfortably sleeping on his right side. Praise God. <laughs> so he was, he, those broken ribs were totally healed. <laughs> it was it was awesome. Um, you know, but I, I've just seen God do so much. And so, you know, I'm sure I'm sure there's a lot of you watching this that are believers, you know, let's just take God at his word. You know, he'll use anybody who's willing and obedient. Amen. That's the truth. Yeah. You know, it's just not right if you're a believer for you to see somebody suffering, you know, limping by, moaning, groaning, and you do nothing with these hands. Right? You certainly are not going to make them worse by laying your hands on them and maybe praying for them or just laying your hand on them and talking to them and letting the power of Jesus flow out, flow out of your arm. Amen? Yeah. But it's wrong to just walk by and do nothing. That's not the love of God. And you know what's so awesome? When you do get to pray for people and you just see how God touches their heart, He takes their pain away, He heals them. You know, God blesses us. Yeah. When we do that, you know, and He just pours so much more into us so then we can... Pour it out more. again. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can bless other people. That is yeah. so true. So it's just, it's a, a life of adventure. <laughs> yes, you know? it is. And it just never gets it old is. seeing the things that God's doing. Amen. Well, thank you, Nancy, for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. And for teaching us how to make sauerkraut. <laughs>